Hey, welcome to New and Old Games. Today, I want to talk about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So I just saw the gameplay for it recently, and there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons. For starters, the graphics, the world design looks fantastic. The artists really nailed that retro futuristic look that Star Wars has, especially accompanied by all those classic Star Wars sounds. It just looks like this game is going to be super, super immersive. The character models, on the other hand, have that uncanny valley feel really bad i don't know if it's the way the eyebrows move or the way the lip syncing is but something just isn't quite right a lot of these characters are actually played by real actors so that will be interesting to too to see how the voice acting goes because we've seen in the past actors really struggle when it comes to voice acting and gaming look no further than peter dinklage in destiny uh, and a lot of these characters, it seems, or at least some of them, are actually characters from other Star Wars spin-off titles. That will be awesome to see what their role is and what other characters from Star Wars are going to show up in this game. Hopefully some from maybe the cartoons. I know a lot of people that love those cartoons. It would be awesome to see those characters show up here and interact with our character. The combat, on the other hand, reminds me a lot of God of War, especially the way our character throws the lightsaber and pulls it back to him. It just reminds me a whole lot of the Leviathan Axe. You do have a lot of force abilities, though, it seems. Force pull, force push. You can even freeze enemies in place. It actually reminds me a lot of Dishonored as well, the way you can mix and match abilities to make cool, unique things happen. That allows a lot of freedom to the player, like freezing a laser beam in place and throwing a stormtrooper into it and watching him fly off of a building and the mini bosses seem at least somewhat unique the way they kind of look different from other enemies i've played a lot of games where mini bosses are just regular enemies but with a different skin color but this time it seems that they will have unique different move sets and it should be fun to fight against them although i don't like what looks like to be quick time events during combat hopefully they don't aren't really frequent and it's just something that happens every now and then as far as exploration goes it seems really similar to dark souls how you can use your different abilities to unlock shortcuts for yourself as well as a little robot mini atreus he can help you out with that as well you can run along walls use force push create bridges a whole bunch of things and there seems to be little bonfire-esque meditation pads where you can go and sit down and it'll fully heal you and that's where you can spend your ability points i would have preferred if i could just level up basically whenever i wanted but it seems like you have to find these designated spots in order to give yourself new abilities and there seems to be drivable vehicle sections which look pretty linear but it should be an interesting change up for gameplay and it seems as though npcs interact with the world on their own without you having to give your direct input to them that creates a lot of life and makes it the world feel a little bit more vibrant so that's always nice to see and as our character goes on to a ship he opens this device and it shows you a bunch of worlds. So it's possible that in terms of exploring different planets, we can choose which planet we want to go to and which one we want to skip. We might even have optional planets where we just have side activities that we really don't have to do. It's just up to us. That would be awesome, especially for a game that I thought was going to be quite linear. If it allows us to have that much freedom, that's always a good thing. The sad thing about all of this, though, is the setting. The game takes place where a lot of recent Star Wars spin-off titles take place, in between the prequels and the original trilogy, which is a shame. That setting has been done to absolute death, and it really restricts the freedom you have to write a story. There's no way that this character can achieve anything of value because it'll affect the canon, and he'll most likely have to die in the end because obviously he isn't in the original trilogy. They should have said it in The Old Republic. I understand that they probably don't want to because it'll just get their game compared to KOTOR more, than it already will be, but it's going to be compared to KOTOR regardless because that's the best game in the Star Wars universe. So they should have done themselves a favor and set the game far away from the movie so they have the creative freedom to write the best story they possibly could. I mean, you can't even choose the dark side in this game. That's not an option. I assume that at least is in part because canonically you cannot have another Sith Lord running around causing havoc during that time period. But And I mean, come on, dude. Everybody wants to use the dark side everybody wants to have force lightning on their side in their repertoire you have lost half of the cool abilities and powers because of the fact that you don't allow us to choose the dark side and that's just a shitty thing i understand your game is linear but if you're gonna create a star wars game you gotta have at least that option so hopefully hopefully this game does well and they can create kotor or a sequel where you have 
those abilities to pick and choose those certain things to give the player even more freedom. But oh well guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe.